Jesus Christ, that is bright. I would take these glasses off, like, I don't know if you want me squinting this entire time, or you want me to just be fucking like X-Man on you, but we'll leave it like this for a second. I might take them off in a little bit, but they are pretty intense, but the sun is more intense, so I'm going to see what I can do. But here in this video, I'm going to share with you a story, and I'm going to share with you a story without my mic. I lost my cord that extends the microphone into my hands, so that right now the mic it has its wind thing, it's still fuzzy, it's still it, but it's mounted on the camera that you're looking at me from, and I can't hold it, but we're gonna make it work, we're gonna make everything happen the same way. It's just that I'm not gonna have a fuzzy thing that I'm waving around and wagging at you while I'm talking. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a story. It's an entertaining story, but I'm, that's not the reason I'm gonna share it with you. The reason that I'm gonna share with you this story is because you're gonna be able to take away something. Yes, it's entertaining, but there's a point there's a purpose and it relates to you in a great way. So if you listen, if you lock into what I'm about to tell you, what I'm about to share with you, do a little storytelling here, you're gonna really, really benefit from this, okay? And uh, yeah, that's about it. So we should we should probably roll the intro at this point. All that I want in this life is the chance to do my thing. So the story starts two nights ago. Two nights ago, there was no Wi-Fi at the hostel that I'm staying at. It's called Salinas, all right? So when I say Salinas, it's a place that I'm staying at. It's a hostel here in downtown Tamarindo. I'm no longer at Dream Sea. If you are aware of that, I was at a hostel before called Dream Sea. I'm not there anymore, it's called Salinas. So there's no Wi-Fi, so I decide to check out some old videos, okay? So I'm going through some old videos. I'm aligning my folders, reorganizing some stuff, and I uncover some really really poignant videos that I forgot that I made and that I never uploaded to YouTube or really showed anybody at all. They were just personal videos of mine and I reviewed them, I relabeled them and I was doing my thing and that was actually a really poignant experience because they were back from the spring semester of 2017, so like a year and a half ago. Alright, so I'm going through those and I'm having kind of like maybe a little bit of, a little bit of an emotional time, just like looking at the stuff, maybe a little tear. And all of a sudden this guy comes up to me and he asks me if I could escort this woman to the bar, okay? So, lock in on that, understand that. Now we're gonna go back in time, two hours. So two hours prior to that, there's a girl named Selma. Selma is staying in a large house, and on her back balcony, an iguana was getting fucked by a gang of raccoons. And when I say fucked, I mean eaten, okay? so. These pack of raccoons were eating this iguana. It was loud, it was rambunctious, and Selma, Selma got the shit scared out of her. So she hid in the bathroom and called up some friends that she knew, okay? She was kind of having a panic attack. She doesn't do super well with animals, and so when a fuck ton of raccoons and shit are fucking up uh, an iguana on the back porch, she got scared, okay? So she runs to the bathroom, she calls up some people, and one of the people that she calls is a guy named Alejandro, okay? Alejandro happens to be the security guard at Salinas, okay? So Alejandro has a little crush on Selma because she stayed there a couple weeks ago. She knows Alejandro because of that. So she calls up Alejandro. Alejandro, even though he's on duty, goes and comes to Selma, picks her up and brings her back to Salinas because he's on duty and he can't leave for that long. I mean, he can't leave technically at all, but it's an emergency and, well, he had to do it. His love was in danger. So Selma ends up at Salinas and I'm there Dick it on my computer reorganizing some stuff. And mind you, this is midnight on a Sunday. It's midnight on a Sunday, and all of a sudden the security guard comes up to me. I'm the only dude around. There's a bunch of picnic tables, lounge chairs. I'm the only one around, I'm the only one still up, or at least still in the camp that's still up, and I'm just there, I'm just there in the vicinity. This is complete serendipity what happens. He comes up to me and he's like, hey, can you escort my friend to the bar? She wants a drink. And I'm saying to myself, well, well, it's already midnight. I guess she could have gone to the bar already, but, oh, fuck it. I mean, I'm just organizing some stuff here. Yeah, I'll meet somebody new. So I go and I meet Selma. He brings me over to Selma, 
and Selma's kind of all nervous, anxiety ridden, and kind of feeling not in her zone. And she wants to go to the bar, she's pretty insistent on it because she wants a drink. Now, mind you, it would have been nice to grab a beer or grab a drink from a liquor store, but it's midnight on a Sunday, so that's not gonna happen. So we leave Selma's, ah, we leave Selena's, I'm sorry, hand in hand, and she's telling me about her life and everything. But it just so happens that the only place open on a Sunday at midnight that serves alcohol is a bar named Sharky's. Now, it's a bar, but it's also half a club. It's where all the gringo tourists go to to meet other gringo tourists and ticos and hook up and shit and just dance. So that's the only place open, and it happens to be around the corner from Selena's. We could actually hear it bouncing music from Selena's. It's really only around the corner. So we go walk over, and she gets into it. She goes and grabs a drink. We loosen up. I have a water. We dance around or we dance what we can. Everybody else is doing salsa. They know what the fuck they're doing because this is Latin America and people actually dance here when they go to clubs. And so, you know, they're doing the thing. I'm kind of like flailing around. Loosen up. Get loosey-goosey. You know, she's decompressing. Letting the nerves calm down. Blah, blah, blah. Goes to the bathroom. Even more calm after that. And then we leave. We joke about uh, getting some hookers because we saw some hookers when we were leaving. That would really de-stress the situation. Really might actually help her out. But we choose not to. We grab a taxi and we head back to her place. I escort her back to her place. We have an amazing time back having some deep conversations about New York, about life, about spirituality, about a number of different topics. Great vibe, great energy. And then she's like, well, do you want to stay the night? I was like, yeah, sure. I'll crash a night here. Get a, you know, a secluded bed. I don't have to stay at the hostel with other people farting and burping in the middle of the night. I was chilling here, had an amazing sleep, woke up, and then she ended up inviting me over uh, to come back later that day, which was yesterday, and spend last night here, and then hang out today while she goes to New York, and I have, well, free reign of the place while she's away. Okay, so that's the end of the story. There's no big climax, there's no punchline, other than the fact that I'm standing here right now telling you about it. There's, that's the end of it. Now, there's something you can take away from this. All right, so we have the story part, and now we have the insight. So if you lock in right now and just listen to what I'm about to say, you're gonna be get a lot, a lot of fucking value, all right? So what I didn't tell you about the story is that it just so happens that Selma is an Instagram influencer. She's massive on Instagram, she's from Paris, and she lives in New York, okay? She's actually on a flight right now. She's literally in the plane. Look at that watch. She's in the plane right now uh, going to New York. She's returning to New York, and I kind of have her place for a little bit. It also happens to be that on her back porch, when the raccoons were fucking up the iguana, that back porch has an infinity pool. It has a spare guest house, and it has a private beach, which I'm standing on right now. In other words, her house is a fucking mansion. It's an 8,000 square foot, nine bedroom mansion, and I've been chilling at it. Now, I was chosen completely randomly. There was complete serendipity when I was chosen. I just so happened to be at the right spot at the right time to meet Selma and come into contact with her in the way that I did, okay? It just so happened that I was the only dude at Selena's when Alejandro needed somebody to escort her to the bar because he couldn't. I mean, he was on duty. He's a security guy there. He needs to be on premises. That was complete luck. But is it complete luck that I established an amazing connection with a wonderful person and got invited back to her place, gained some trust, some comfort, and now I get to stay at her place while she's away? And weird earrings comes oh, into her and saves her life. Evan was never weird. It was on point the entire time. We have luck and then we have skills. So some of the skills that I implemented were my ability to understand the context of the situation between Selma and I. Where she's coming from, where I'm coming from, what she's conveying covertly, okay? So understanding that context from covert communication, how she's feeling, how I can calibrate to that, what I'm communicating covertly as well. Also like maintaining a strong frame, being somebody that is perceived as valuable, somebody that's interesting, somebody that you wanna hang out with and just enjoy their time. Also things like calibrating to the fact that she's an Instagram influencer. There are certain things that I needed to do and certain things I'm gonna teach you in future videos that you need to implement where, or when you're interacting with somebody that has a public persona, when they have a lot of eyes on them or they have an online presence. There's certain things they need to do. So the ability to calibrate to that. Also, just being able to be vulnerable myself. Allowing her to feel comfort. Allowing or my ability to listen to somebody and give my full attention and giving them the gift of my full attention and therefore the therapeutic gift and exercise of them venting over to me, sharing their problems, sharing their emotions, sharing their feelings, whether it be paranoia, anxiety, 
you know, frustration, whatever it might be from raccoons getting, getting, uh, or raccoons doing the gangbanging on some iguana on the back porch, right? It's kind of shocking and panic attack inducing. So doing that, allowing her to feel comfortable, and also realizing and calibrating to the fact that it's way better for somebody to invite you to do something than you ask them to do something. You know, you want to network with somebody. What's the best thing that you could say to them in order to get their number? What's the best opener? What's the best conversation that you could have, right? What's the best way that you can network with somebody that you want to network with? Think outside the box. I'm going to think outside the fucking box here. Lock in. It's for them to want to network with you. Okay? There are ways to do that. There are ways to do that. I'm going to teach you that on this channel. What's the best way to hang out at somebody's mansion overnight and for the next couple days? Well, it's for them to invite you over to do that. You get what I'm saying? So allowing her, being aware, having the ability to give her the space to invite me rather than me asking and pushing it myself. Okay, so these are just a number of skills that are at play um, that allowed me to manifest what is manifested from these skills and that's why I'm so pumped to teach them to you. As a teacher who's teaching the audience and just giving my value to the world via video, you know, video is my medium of teaching, I can tell you directly about what I'm doing. I can tell you the you know, the nuggets of wisdom that I'm implementing in my life and I can teach that directly to you. I can share that information with you. But what's beautiful about video is that I can simultaneously show you. I can show you my personal journey. I can show you my implementation firsthand, live. And I can show you my direct results. I can tell you about them, but I can also show you my results. And so when people ask me how I get into these situations, how I get into, you know, just meeting and befriending a dude randomly all of a sudden on the street in Florence, he happens to own a leather jacket store, we have a cool conversation, I get him on video, and I get that local flair in that way. Or going on a six day vacation with my friends, some of the best friends that I've ever had uh, in a villa in Ibiza, you can see that, I can show you that. When I get into situations where I get thrown up in a luxury condo for two weeks in order to do some video work in a, in a work exchange with this personal trainer, you get to see that and I can show you that and I can teach you why it's happening and how it's happening firsthand, live, as it's happening. And so people ask me like, how the fuck do you get into these situations? How do you have these cool experiences? Is it luck? Is it skill? What the fuck is it? And we talk about the dynamic between the two. And here's my answer. I always say this. It's not luck or skill. They are not mutually exclusive. It's both, and they work in tandem, okay? It's luck and skill. It's luck that I happened to be in the right place at the right time two nights ago in Salinas where Alejandro created contact with me and Selma. But it's also skill, the fact that I created an amazing connection with the woman and made her feel comfortable enough to allow me in her place, to have an amazing experience here, learn from what I did from her, and just be able to share my content with you right now have this video, be able to tell this story, okay? That's the skill component of it. It's not one or the other. Now, going forward, luck, can we control luck? No, luck is completely out of our control. Skill, completely within our control. Skill is 100% in our control. And pretty much, should you focus on the things that you can't control or the things that you can control? Okay, if you don't know how to answer that, we got some work to do, but it's what you can control. We can only work on those and that which we can control, okay? So, yes, there's luck which we can't control, but what you can be proud of yourself for, what you can be responsible for, is what you do do. And what you do do is implement skills. That's pretty much all that you're doing at every single moment of your life is implementing some sort of skill. Now, what's the one skill that has allowed me what's the one skill that's really manifested all these opportunities and experiences for me, right? What's that one skill? Well, it's a skill that I teach on my YouTube channel. It's the skill of socializing. Social skills. And fortunately, fortunately they work in the way that they're teachable. I can teach them to you, you can learn them. The great thing about it is that you're not born with the baseline skill that you edge at the vagina. You can build these skills up. They take on momentum. There are people that can help you and guide you along, help facilitate your inner actualization, such as myself, if I do my job correctly. The one skill that's allowed me to hang out with Selma, to go on these cool experiences, to get thrown into new situations, to do some crazy learning and open up doors for myself is the skill of socializing. Like, think about it. What's the other way that I could have stayed at this place? What's the other way that I could have stayed at a mansion that goes for 50 grand a fucking month, right? Well, I could go to school and get a great education or take a risk and, 
invest some money and somehow manifest a lump sum of money and then pay my way into it. Okay, the only way that you can create these meaningful relationships and these opportunities for yourself is via social skills. Social skills allow you to not have to go work, go fucking put in the time, energy, money, opportunity costs to make the fucking money yourself, then buy the apartment, the luxury condo, or the fucking mansion for yourself and stay there. You can just befriend the person, be best friends with somebody that happens to own a mansion, and then benefit from that experience. I mean, that's one benefit. I'm not saying that you want to fucking network with somebody just because they're rich or just because they have opportunities, but I'm not saying that you don't want to do that either, right? It's not one or the other. Not everything is binary. It works on a spectrum. That's another video. But now you know, and now you can see why I'm so passionate about what I teach. I mean, you can see the results firsthand. The beautiful thing about video is that I can show you. I mean, up until I started making videos, all it was was stories. You can see it implemented firsthand and you can visualize how you can do it for yourself. The amazing thing about me showing you this is that you can visualize it happening for yourself. And that gives you further momentum. It gives you a stronger tool. You get further and better actualization and pretty much inspiration that you can do it for yourself because we as humans, we have optics. We're visual people. If I can show it, that's the power of fucking video. You can do the same, you can visualize. I know you can fucking visualize you doing the exact same. That's why I'm so amped to share this story with you. That's why I'm giving you these takeaways. And that's why I'm making this video for you right now. That's why I'm putting in all the money, all the time, all the effort, all the opportunity costs to benefit you because I've benefited so magnanimously from developing my own personal social skills that I want to give it to you. I think I know how to, I think I'm doing it very well and I hope that you listen and I hope that you understand. I hope that I can really facilitate your understanding and really get into your head how fucking powerful this is and motivate you and inspire you to learn this shit, okay? Just me rambling on like this, letting the outpour of energy flow, I'm just sharing with you, right? I just spoke for two minutes, not stumbling at all, just sharing, that's fucking amp, that's inspiration, that's motivation, that's just fucking energy flowing from me. Where does that motivation, where does that energy come from? That comes from passion. I'm passionate about this. You can see the passion. You can see the passion. You can see what I'm doing. You can see it for yourself. Visualize it for yourself. Lock into what I'm saying. Really, really try to understand that you can do this for yourself. These skills are huge. Fucking huge. Hard skills, great. Invest some time in them. Soft skills, socializing. A lot of people don't realize how fucking powerful they are. This is the last point that I'm gonna make and then we're gonna really wrap this thing up. Imagine that you're sitting there and you intellectually know and sometimes you strum a guitar. All right, you can play a couple basic chords. And then I show you and I convey to you and I make you aware of the fact that playing guitar is a fucking skill. You can build momentum, you can put in work, stretch your rubber band and eventually become an amazing fucking guitarist. You don't even know that. Right now, you're just playing a couple chords and you think that that's it. You came out of the womb and you were born with your ability to play a couple chords on the guitar, all right? Think about that. I come over and I tell you, hey, I can fucking teach you in that it's a skill and I'm gonna be able to teach you that you can improve yourself through practice, through daily momentum, through macro momentum, and you can create something fucking amazing. You can start shredding. Most people think of that with socializing. Most people don't realize what you can fucking do by being an amazing socialist. Not getting political, but having amazing social skills. What you can do when you level up from level one of charisma to a thousand. What sort of opportunities and doors open for you? So most people don't even understand what it's like to play a fucking song. Most people don't understand what it's like to befriend somebody and hang out at their mansion. You get what I'm saying? These are just like really shitty examples of the fact that you don't understand what the major leagues are like, okay? If you put in time, you can make something fucking amazing. A uh, fucking amazing almost as amazing as you are. All right, so that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed the takeaways. I hope you implement at least one or two things that I've taught you and brought a word to you today. All right, that's my goal. I hope you enjoyed. I thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. I'm gonna continue to teach you what I'm doing. I'm gonna continue to show you how I'm implementing what I'm teaching so you can see it firsthand, so that you can get inspired, so you can visualize it for yourself. And more importantly, above all, so you can fucking do it for yourself because it's amazing. If you don't believe me, I can show you how fucking dope it is, all right? I want my presence and my say to be over fucking whelming. I'm gonna bring you up. Let me hold your hand. Let me facilitate your 
self-actualization. Let's do this together. Let's collab. Let's subscribe. You should subscribe. We'll collab. Thank you so much for watching. Ed McGuffey, Tamarindo Beach. Sign now. It's you. Is it? It's you. Is it me? Who are you and where are you from? I am Sama. I'm from New York, Paris, and I'm Berber. Nice. Hi. Yeah. And welcome to the channel. And what are you doing here in Costa Rica? I'm visiting and I'm launching my program as an influencer. As an influencer? Yes. On what pr platform? On Instagram. I okay. Mm -hmm. oh, right. <laughs> Right. I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. So the yeah. reason that it, I could cut anything out. Really? Yes. Okay, I could that's cut cool. Anything, whatever you want. You tell me right now. You tell me afterwards. It's completely fine. But cool. We can't add anything back in. Okay. Okay. So the reason I have Selman on. Well, there's a number of reasons, but this one in particular is because last night she came into my life in a very interesting and serendipitous way. And I'll talk about that later, but from your perspective, what happened to you last night and how did we come into contact? Because it's a hell of a fucking story. Do I tell the story? I think you would do a better job at telling the story from your perspective. We'll do yours first and then mine. Ladies first. For me, um, Evan showed up as a rendezvous from, um, from the heavens, basically. It was a rescuer and he showed up all the way, moved in all the way. Didn't need any explanation, just allowed in, is here. Evan said, I'm here, all the way, <clears throat> you. Okay, so in other words, there are a bunch of raccoons that raped an iguana outside <laughs> here on the back deck. And Selma was shit scared and she called her friend who happened to be the security guard at the hostel I was staying at because she stayed there the week before. So he comes over, he brings her back to the hostel. I'm chilling, just looking at old videos, trying to organize my shit. And that was a whole kind of emotional wraparound for me. But then this guy's like, hey, could you chaperone this very nice lady to Is the bar? She nice needs thing? a drink. And I'm like, well, it's 12 midnight on a Sunday, but ah, what the hell? All right, I'll go. So I hop over, I meet Selma. Selma's kind of, you know, in a little anxiety-induced kind of state. She just was scared shitless because there was a bunch of animals getting okay. gang-banged on her back porch. With a pepper spray and an umbrella. Yeah, so she had an umbrella and a pepper spray and she's like, hold the fucking pepper spray. Anyway, so <laughs> we go, we go and there's only one bar open in town or really there's only one place you can get liquor at 12 p.m. on a Sunday and that was, do you remember the name of the Sharkies. bar? Sharkies. Yes. And what is Sharkies? It's a bar club zone. Zone. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the music like? Loud or soft? I was very loud, very eclectic, and very, like, everybody was dancing and everybody was doing their thing. It was very confusing for me. Mm. And we rolled with it, right? We did. We did. It took yeah. you a little bit to warm up, but then you got in. Yeah. And you were vibing. You had your drink. You wanted to, you know, calm down. Yeah, of course. Let the emotions settle. Mm -hmm. It was good. And then we came back here, vibed, had a really nice time. And then I had an amazing fucking sleep. Amazing sleep. So from Selma's perspective, all of a sudden this weird dude with long hair and weird earrings comes uh, into her and Evan she saves her life. Evan was never weird. He was on point the entire time. That and was, from my perspective... Uh -huh. <laughs> I was, I was probably very weird because I was all panicky because of the animals. And Selma the was the fucking weird one. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah, probably is. <laughs> but, but she warmed up. We were going to get a couple of... Outside the bar, fill in the blank. We are going to get a couple of... Of uh, hookers. Oh yeah, maybe. I mean, you you talk about that. Uh, it was Evan's idea, and I was I said yes, why not? And then mm. we we didn't agree on the choice because he want, he had an idea and I had a different choice. And then yeah, I said you can pick whatever you want. Okay, so we're warming up at the bar. All right, we're getting into it, getting a little loosey goosey in this Sunday at midnight. All right. Yeah. We exit the bar like it's time to go, mm -hmm. and we spot these females outside of the bar and obviously well tikas I might have to that's what they do in costa rica yeah they have a lot of gifts to give such what, as their vagina such as whatever you want they have it they got it mm -hmm. one of them are the tikas or whatever other fun things yes 
So I, there were women looking for transactions outside, and I felt like I could joke with Selma because she was coming into a nice, yes, was, present, warm state. And I love the idea. Actually. But she held the joke so much that she fucked me over with the joke in the sense that I was like, well, yeah, let's I go said, get yes. some hookers. Yes. Let's calm down. Yeah. Let's have a good time and ease into the night. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then she was like, I love yeah. The idea. That's an amazing idea. Which one do you want? And I'm like, yeah. Shit, I thought she was gonna like slap I, me on the arm or something for that. I thought no. you were gonna get mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> but you're like, yeah, which one do you want? Yeah. And we we kind of we had our distance in the in the preference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we that was smart. We didn't come to a conclusion. And then Evan moved here into this beautiful mansion and slept well, right? And yeah, slept really well. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And enter into the zone. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. So Hit up Selma. Um, check out her Rainbow Consciousness whenever that comes out. When is it coming out? Do you know? January. In January 2019? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have a website? I will share with the followers. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Website. Yeah. Okay. On Instagram, they can follow me on Insta. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'll put some links down below in the description and you can check out Selma. You can follow her. Hit her up. She's on a mission. She's a wonderful woman. She came into my life in a very interesting way. I'm very thankful to be with her. I'm very thankful to share her energy. And um, yeah. thankful that she came on and said, uh, said hello. Yeah. yeah. Namaste. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Namaste. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Or as I would say in Yalla habibi, ciao! ciao. <laughs>